The draft is less than a week away. Team Keep It Clean, y'all make sure y'all come through on the channel because we will be doing a live stream of the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there. So you don't miss it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn them notifications on so you can get notified of videos like this, live streams like that, and every single video that we drop. And also leave a like on the video because that helps a lot, especially it helps with your notifications. It helps tell YouTube like, hey... I like these videos a little bit. They're okay. They ain't nothing special, but I like them a little bit. So I'm, I want to be notified so I can come back and watch some more. Now, we got some more questions from Team Keep It Clean about the NFL draft. You know what? Let's just get straight into it. First question came from my guy, JD. He said, with the NFL draft vastly approaching, there's been a lot of talk about which position group the Ravens should target first. It certainly has been. A lot of people saying offensive line can't be mad at that. A lot of people saying receiver can't never be mad at that. Some people saying edge, some people saying corner. So there's been a lot of different opinions. And everybody got their reasoning for each. But let's continue. He said, I'm more so leaning towards taking wide receiver with pick 30. I like you, JD. You're, you're a cool guy. He said, a lot of the fan base has been targeting Keon Coleman with that particular pick. But... The more I watch the film, I'm starting to lean towards Donnie Mitchell and Lad McConkey. Little did I realize was that Todd Monk and coach both receivers at Georgia in 2021. Oh, so he's a little familiar with them boys. He got that familiarity. So he should have greater analysis of those two. Mm, that's interesting. I, I forgot that Donnie Mitchell, he, he spent his first two years uh, at Georgia. He didn't really do much of anything. Um, then he went to uh, Texas and then he just exploded. Uh, sort of like... Um, Ah. Xavier uh, Leggett He's somebody the first couple of years Wasn't really too much And then, then he exploded that last season It's like they, it's like contract years this, These are contract years Sort of for these collegiate players Because they like Look, I moved schools for a reason I want more of an opportunity I'm getting ready to go to the draft I gotta go off And that's exactly what they do So I can't be mad at them for that Anyway, continuing He said Um AD provides both the skill set and physical attributes of a true X and will complement Zay Flowers very well. He would. He would, but continuing. He said, on the other hand, Ladd appears to be one of the most fluid route runners of the draft, similar to Zay in last year's draft. With that rough analysis, would the Ravens more specifically Todd Munkin target that the receiver that will fulfill the prototypical X skill set opposite of Zay or draft the receiver with a similar skill set to Zay? It's a really, really good question, and I love it. What a, what a fun way to, to start us off talking about one of my favorite subjects, Ravens wide receivers. Well, I think it just depends on what you're going to do with one Rashad Bateman. Eric DaCosta, um, when he was on the UK Ravens podcast, he talked about how he was bullish on Rashad Bateman. He really felt like if Rashad Bateman stays healthy, then he can have a really good year. He can make a really big impact and that. Uh, but last year, the ball was spread around more since they had a bunch of receivers. But this year, he expected to be Rashad Bateman. I just think Eric DaCosta was just talking. Um, I think he was just talking Rashad Bateman up. And I um, I talked about this last night with my guy, Matt. Um, I, I, I think that, and I know this may sound crazy to a lot of people, but I could see Rashad Bateman being traded. Um, now, it would make the receiver room weaker. Um, and my, my preference was, has always been and still is that the Ravens keep Rashad Bateman and they add a receiver of some significance. But I know things can get a little tricky and it's the business side of things. So you can't keep everybody, but we'll see what goes down. Um, but I feel like you really can't go wrong with either one. And actually, my preference at the wide receiver position, and I know like it's probably highly unlikely, but Xavier Worthy. That would be my guy, Xavier Worthy, because of Lamar Jackson. And the reason I say that because and, and now I know Lad Lad uh, McConkey he got some good speed, man. He he got some good speed. That boy he he be, he be moving. Um, but uh, with Xavier Worthy, I know Lamar Jackson. He loves the deep ball, and he is trying to throw the deep ball all day every day. But I just feel like a lot of times he can overestimate uh, his receiver's speed. Um, because like with Odell Beckham Jr., he'll get open and Lamar throw and sometimes he'll overthrow. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold up there, buddy. And maybe because he bulked up so much, that arm strength went, whew, it went through the roof. But, um, and then yeah, we saw enough overthrows last year. But again, with the deep ball, it's a low percentage ball. So a lot of times overthrows get, they get overblown. But there was some big missed opportunities with some overthrows. 
You get an Xavier Worthy, <laughs> you ain't gonna overthrow him. <laughs> you are not. And he's somebody, obviously, with the crazy speed that he has. Because he, he got the 40 speed, but it's on the football field as well. Not everybody got that. But I just feel like he would be such a great compliment to this Baltimore Ravens offense. And if they kept Rashad Bateman, I would, I would love that. Like to have Xavier Worthy, Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, Isaiah. Light. But this, uh, this receiver class, like you mentioned, McConkley, he would be nice too. Cause he, that that boy always getting open. Mitchell would be nice too. He would fit right in as well. So you you got like so many different options, and at, at, you got Xavier Leggett, who we just talked about too. At pick number thirty, all them boys ain't gonna be going. They ain't all gonna be going. You're going to have your option on who. Well, you're going to have options on who you want to select. It may not be your top guy, but somebody's going to be there at pick 30. So it's up to the Ravens to make the right decision. But I feel like you can go like so many different routes. Oh, yeah. Speaking of receivers, I'm so many different routes. I get it. But you go so many different routes uh, with this. Um, it's, it's not like I know people say, oh, yeah, we need a prototypical X. We need a guy, a big body outside guy for sure. And they could use that. But. Can Bateman be that? Like, it's, the potential is right there. And I know that you cannot bank on potential alone, and you can't just keep hoping, all right, this is going to be the year. All right, maybe this is going to be, all right, well, this could be the year. But um, it's there. It, it's there for sure. Um, It just, they got to get it out of them. But what I was suggesting, have been suggesting that while you're hoping to get it out of Bateman in the meantime, Add a receiver of some significance one way or another. He also said, continuing, after reading through the analysis of those two, I forgot to mention their weaknesses. Uh-oh. So I, I, I love this, though. You talk about the good, but you talk about the bad as well. He said, with Ladd, his flaws more so revolve around his frame and his catch radius. Typical jabs as shifty receiving prospects. Uh, okay, so a smaller guy, but his, his uh, catch radius is a little smaller. Oh, okay, I mean... That, we talked about this in yesterday's video. Um, shorter receivers, it can be, you got to be more pinpoint accurate with them, in my opinion. Uh, because, uh, yeah, like of the catch radius. Like with a bigger receiver, uh, they make it a little bit easier for you um, because they give you more room for error. Uh, but anyway, he continuing, he said, with A.D. Mitchell, his flaws seem to be a little, a little bit more fatal as there are moments where his effort level is not there in the run blocking situations and in situations where he's not the first read on a particular play. Ooh. <laughs> so that's all personality stuff. Um, though that, that, that's big personality traits right there because, hey, if I ain't the number one option, uh, I'll just be lackadaisical with it or oh, whatever. I just go through the motions. If I got a run block, um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I block a little bit, but it's, it is what it is. You can't have that, man. You you can't you cannot have that. It, the, football is the ultimate team sport. It really is. And if you lack a days ago when it comes to effort, oh, you can have all the skill in the world. But if you don't put the effort in, ooh. Now, is he coachable? Can that be fixed? I think so for sure. You got to have the right people in his ear, though. Um. So with that being said, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, um. He said, oh, and he also said with that being said, <laughs> he said with that being said, scouts still project Mitchell a bit higher because of the idea of being the prototypical X. He was the primary receiver for both Georgia and Texas, but given the Ravens' history of receiver prospects, should that be a risk the team takes? Yeah. You don't stop swinging just because you ain't been knocking it out the park. And, but recently, Eric DaCosta, when it comes to drafting first-round receivers, uh, he been doing his thing Like Hollywood Brown Immediate impact Did his thing Was a good receiver for the Ravens uh, It obviously didn't work out in the long run uh, Rashad Bateman Again it's tricky because it's there But we all know We ain't got to talk about it again And then Zay Flowers last year So yeah I mean you look at the other guys that he drafted at receiver They've been later picks So it's much lower expectations Like uh, Tylen Wallace Devin DuVernay, James Prochet, Miles Boykin. Um, so those those haven't really worked. Well, Devin DuVernay did because he ended up being a good return man, uh, and he was a solid receiver. He didn't really get many opportunities. He did a couple years ago, but recently he didn't really get many opportunities like that. Um, so with that being said, uh, you, yeah, you don't stop swinging. But Eric DeCosta has done – he's done a, a hard job of winning. You know, he's done – 
when it comes to drafting receivers overall, because Eric DeCosta has been a GM since 2019, when it comes to drafting first-round receivers, I say that he's done well. Um, the other guys, it all just depends. A lot got to do with opportunity, too, because you can't show yourself if you ain't getting no chances. Because um, usually what the Ravens will do, they draft the receiver early, like in the first round, like they have been, but they'll have a veteran there, too, which is understandable because you don't want it all to be on a rookie. Uh, except in, well, 2019, it wasn't even all on Hollywood because he had Willie Sneed, too. Um, so, yeah, man, Eric DeCosta's been doing his thing there. But with McConkey, I mean, McConkey with uh, Mitchell, throwing Worthy in there, too, I, I just feel like with the options that you have, there's not, there's not a bad option. Like, these guys could come in and go to work. Uh, they could come in and be great. Counterparts to a Zay Flowers, to a possibly a Rashad Bateman as well, hopefully as well, Will Cito, uh, or to Cortland Sutton. Questions came from my guy Javo. He said, What's your perfect offseason for the Ravens? For example, who you cutting, who contracts you restructuring, and which free agents you're trying to get with our cap situation? You're in the GM chair. I know we got to keep some money in the bank for OA or Bateman, but definitely for Kyle Hamilton, who will get a max contract. Hold up, this ain't NBA. I mean, he's going to get his bread now for sure. Kyle, Kyle Hamilton going to cost a lot. Because uh, as my guy Matt reminded me yesterday, um, this is the after this year, Kyle Hamilton will be eligible for a contract extension already. That'll be so fast. But uh, yeah, after three years, you can start talking contract. Um, they're obviously going to pick up that fifth year option. No, no doubt in anybody's mind that they're going to pick up that fifth year option for sure. Um, but yeah, they can start talking numbers. So. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, he said, do you think the Ravens issue with money is we wait too late to work on giving young talent extensions to avoid situations like we had with Lamar and Beeks currently? No, they they don't wait too late. They tried to get Lamar under contract. Remember, they they, they been this, this. It wasn't just a last year thing. That thing had been going on for years. They had been trying to get Lamar under contract, but the numbers, they wasn't looking good with Lamar. Lamar nope. He said, I ain't saying that. So they tried earlier with Matt BK. It wasn't a one year thing with him. It wasn't all. I mean, it wasn't just happening this off season. No, they tried last year to get him signed to an extension. They tried it last year. It was people. Well, last off season, even the people said, "Nope, we ain't signing that." Boom, played it out, and it worked out for him. So, a guy like Michael Pierce, they got his done early with Justice Hill. They oh no, his contract ran out, but he wasn't like a, a hot commodity as a free agent. Um. Who else? Somebody else they got done early. Broderick Washington, they got his done early. Um, so th they they try to get stuff done early rather than late if the intention is on keeping you. Um, if the intention ain't on keeping you, then you saw with Patrick Queen, they talked about how they talked, but I don't really talk, talk. With J.K. Dobbins, they talked about how they talked, but I don't really talked. Talk. With Gus Edwards, I don't even, I don't even think they talked about how they talked. Um, so you, and all them guys are going. But if they intend on keeping you, then they make the effort. Anyway, he said, last question is, since we missed out on DK, well, hold, hold up now. I wouldn't say we missed out on him. It just depends. Some stuff can shake up. But anyway, he said, since we missed out on DK Metcalf, we should draft a big body receiver out of South Carolina, Xavier Leggett, who is compared to DK, but slightly better. What are your thoughts? I would, I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. Straight up. That's it. He said, congratulations on a new Ravens girl, which sounds like a great nickname. Raven, LOL. Sorry for being late with congratulations. Shout out. Sorry for the not so long questions, but yet long answers. <laughs> you ain't got to apologize for none of that, my friend. Um, well, back to the original question. What was the perfect offseason for the Ravens? What would it be? Um, my, my perfect offseason would have been keeping mostly everybody from last year. I know it's impossible, but that would have been it. Keeping guys like Jadavian Clowney. Um, the running back situation, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have minded, uh, that getting upgraded. I, I like the Derrick Henry signing. Oh, you know what a perfect off season for me would have been getting Derrick Henry, um, bringing back Dalvin cook, letting JK Dobbins go greener pastures, you know, Gus Edwards go to, and nothing against those guys. Cause I like both of them. Um, but if Keaton Mitchell was healthy, that would be my perfect offseason. And my guy Javo's other question, he said, which game next season are you more excited about when it comes to playing against former players? I'll say Chargers first, then Steelers. I mean, both of them. I mean, really, really all of them, because you, you got, like, with Patrick Queen, that's going to be really fun. And that can that should hopefully reignite this Ravens-Steelers rivalry. 
Um, I think with Russell Wilson being there, that should hopefully reignite it as well. But certainly to Patrick Queen. Because I, I hope Patrick Queen is running his mouth and talking his trash. He, he will be. He will be. But I hope the Ravens, they doing the same thing. Back and forth with him. Oh, man. Because that, that, that could make it that much more fun. Because, again, like we've been saying, the Ravens Steelers rivalry, it's not dead, dead, but it's, uh, it's close. Uh, it's just not nearly what it used to be at all for a lot of different reasons. But that could definitely help it a lot. And with the Chargers, like, it ain't no, like, I feel like it ain't no beef with the Chargers. Like, it's just like, oh, y'all signing him too? Oh, ain't y'all signing this guy? Ain't y'all signing him? Ain't y'all signing him? Oh, okay, cool. But it ain't no, like, oh, we hate the Chargers. It ain't nothing like that with them. Um, it's like it's like friendly almost. Like, oh, okay, you got that guy too friendly. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. So I'm I'm looking forward to both games, man. Both of them should be fun. Um, maybe uh maybe we get Raven Steelers in prime time again. Maybe. Last question on this episode came from my guy Raven Pride, who's a team keep it clean patron. I appreciate you, my guy. He says, sorry, I've been MIA. Uh, and I've been really busy at work since he caught COVID. Oh man, I didn't know you caught COVID, man. I hope you're doing good now, though, man. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're nice and healthy and ready to watch some Ravens football. But first, the draft. But anyway, he said, um, I'm glad to be back with the team. Keep it clean family. Hey, we glad that you're back. He said, I also want to say I hope you and your family are doing well. We're we, we, we doing good, man. I, I appreciate you asking, man. He said, my question is, or my two questions are, <laughs> perfect punctuation and uh, grammar and all that stuff. So I had to get my little English teacher on. Anyway, he said, uh, sh we should draft a left tackle and trade for a proven wideout, and I believe we could let Bateman go. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a way to end things on this episode. Um, definitely, uh, as far as the offensive line, drafting a left tackle. Now, uh, if we drafted a left tackle, would that be somebody who could play right tackle this year? Uh, because uh, what they could do is draft a tackle, Somebody a left tackle, somebody who primarily a, left, a primary left tackle because Ronnie Stanley his contract is up after this year, and so he could be on up out of there. But if you draft a left tackle who could play right tackle, you could have your guy in place. You could have your left tackle of the future in place already. Uh, and I mean, you could get him next year too, but you could have him already established with the team. Um, so that I could see that happening. And he also said uh, trade for a proven wideout. I, I could see that happening for sure. For sure. And I still think the Ravens are going to do that. Who it is? Could be anybody. Could be Colin Sutton. I know there have been a lot of talk about Brandon Ayuk from people. Um, then another one. Uh, one of my guys hit me up yesterday. And he talked about And I was like, whoa. I didn't even think about that. It was my guy, Michael, all the way from Brazil. And he said, Chris Godwin. And I was like, oh, because I didn't think about that. Now, that would not be my favorite choice. Wouldn't be my top choice. It would be solid, though. And it would be very, very Raven-esque to make a move like that. Somebody under the radar. Somebody who ain't nobody really talking about like that. Somebody somebody in the NFC. So, you'll be changing uh, divisions. I mean, excuse me, conferences. Excuse me. Well, obviously divisions, too. But you'll be changing conferences. We do play the Bucks next year, too, in Tampa, by the way. Uh, hopefully the schedule with that game will be perfect. Hopefully it'll be a, a prime time game because that can make it easier for me. Anyway, um, so yeah, that is an option too. Again, wouldn't be my first option, wouldn't be my second option, but it is like when we think about the Baltimore Ravens and the possibility of them trading for a, any type of player, um, we we a lot of times we think in here. We think in here like, oh yeah, this is the guy we want. This is the guy the Ravens should get. Um, but then when you think about how the Ravens could be thinking about things. They could be thinking of all the way over here. And when you think about it realistically, it's like, oh, okay. You may not agree with it all the time. It may not be your favorite move all the time. But when you think realistically, based off of who the Baltimore Ravens are and what they've done, then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense.